So this show, uh, 1.85 million art peripheries, is so kind of about two things. It's about, in the most simplest place, it's about location and geography and living outside of metropolises. So being suburban or peri-urban sort of locations where you're not considered in the center and you know how these these towns relate to what one would call the center. Um, traveling to and from uh, the city to, or the CBD for work. Do you consider um, where you live, your town, its own city in its own right? Do you even need to travel? What kind of freedoms are allowed by living outside of the city? Um, a lot of artists do live outside of the city. Um, obviously because you, know, you can get cheaper rents and you know, this changes the cultural landscape as well. But further than that, this show is also about peripheral and marginal ideas and the communities that those ideas may and how they may take form. Um, so progressive ideas, for example, we've got Corita Kent in the show and she was um, formerly known as Sister Corita. She was a Catholic nun who was sort of pushing the boundaries and changing the ideas of how nuns should act. Um, you know, in the 1960s she was outspoken about the war in Vietnam, she was suggesting the nuns, the young nuns, don't need to wear their habits. And she was melding these two cultures, the sort of biblical and, you know, Catholic um, way of thinking. She was absolutely dedicated to, um, to God, and, but she was also using these counterculture um, themes and ideas lyrics from the Grateful Dead um, and otherwise, but she sort of, she was definitely on a periphery. She was sort of um, acknowledged and quasi or partly accepted by each of these communities, but still she was too biblical for the, you know, for the hippies and she was too revolutionary for the church. And she, you know, she tried her own path and eventually was sort of ousted from the church um, for being too radical um, and, you know, really was, uh, was in her own place. Another artist um, that's using sort of a metaphorical idea of um, community and, and peripheral communities is Paul B. Davis, who has adapted um, Nintendo Entertainment System cartridges. All the works in his room run off NESs, um, and he actually takes apart the cartridge. He's sort of taking back the power of this kind of, at one stage, very powerful computer in your own home, so breaking through. I guess their systems and their propriety, and reconfiguring these these games to make contemporary art. He uses the Mario character quite a lot, um, and Mario Brothers World to sort of reimagine what it feels like to be Mario. There's one example, One Piece, um, where Mario is sort of trapped inside the game, and um, he's running around in circles, and he's sort of inside. Um, he said life's not a game anymore and he's kind of getting depressed and you know he's stuck and you know everything's moving on but he's this outdated game that's you know it's, it's, it's become sad and you know everyone's moved on but him and he's sort of running around in a circle. I wanted to see some work about Western Sydney and a lot of Gary's artwork is about Western Sydney um, and it's sort of a portrait of I see, I see Gary's work as portraiture I see it it's, it, it shows a community, it shows these really interesting things that happen that most people would, would miss. And if he doesn't sort of shine a light on them and suggest, look, this is worth looking at, I think a lot of these things would, would disappear. It's sort of the extraordinary in the banal. Yeah, you agree, uh, that's a really good summary of my life, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I guess living here, I, 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 I kind of feel a responsibility to represent Western Sydney in a really true and positive light, you know, because um, sometimes Western Sydney, issues in Western Sydney gets hijacked by the media and it, and it gets portrayed, you know, um, in, in, a, in, a, in a wrong light. So as an artist, I, I feel like, I, you know, I have those skills, those media skills and photography and you know, graphic design and the internet and I feel like you know I have those skills and I have a voice and I could use those skills in my voice to you know represent um, this community in, 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 in the way it should be represented. You know? I'm, I'm Chinese Vietnamese um, I've lived in Western City my life um, and I live in the Auburn area so it's like 
it's the most culturally diverse area in, in Australia. So a lot of migrants, when they come into Sydney, that's where they settle. Yeah. So I guess, you know, going to school there and living there all my life, I, I'm exposed to all these different communities, you know. Yeah, so, so I guess that's my background. And I guess Western Sydney, in a grander sense, is that place also. It is sort of where people stop when they immigrate to, to, uh, to Australia, to, I guess, the, you know, the biggest city, Sydney. Um, and it's interesting to know that one in 11 Australians lives in Western Sydney. It is a massive population and obviously much bigger than the eastern suburbs or the CBD. Mm. And of course, variety because of that reason. Yeah. But your, your photographs seem celebratory to me. I mean, they, they're sort of choosing these things to sort of... Celebrate these banal things. Yeah, these, these strange, curious things that, yeah. um, you know, that definitely shape our identity, our Australian yeah. suburban identity. Yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to do more and more of as I'm realising where the work is going, you know. Because mm. a, a lot of photographers, they look at the big important events and pictures, you know. Where I'm, I'm going the other way, I'm looking at the really, really tiny, minute things that, yeah. you know, you take for granted every day. You know? yeah. I'm celebrating those things, you know, which I think more people can relate to. I, I can talk about this photo. I mean, um, this photo was taken in uh, Blacktown, somewhere in Blacktown. And, um, you know, I, I like going to places where um, it doesn't look like anything's happening. It doesn't look like there's possibility for any photo, any interesting photo to capture. I walked to this park and there was literally there was nothing there. It was just like this park and it was really, really boring. And I thought, oh no, there's nothing here, you know. And I was just walking around my camera and then I walked down this, along this creek and, and then I saw this guy and he was like looking up and down this creek for something. I'm not sure what he was looking at, you know. And then I, I saw him like jump over the creek once and I go, oh, that should, I, I thought that would have been a good photo, you know, and then I thought, oh, damn, I, damn, I missed it, you know, and then I, then I knew he was, and he looked like he was about to jump over a creek again and I had my camera ready and I took it, you know, and, and there he was just like jumping over the creek, you know, and when I, when I saw the photo again in my camera, I thought, I immediately thought this is one of the best photos I've ever taken, you know, and in a place where five minutes ago, I thought there was nothing here, like there was no photo here, and I wasted my time. You know, and all of a sudden, it just, bang, comes together, you know, and those moments for me are magic, you know, that's what I'm looking for in my photography, is that moment where there's nothing here, there's no story, I'm not going overseas, I'm not, there's no interesting story here, I'm just walking about, and all of a sudden it's there, it's magic, you know, it comes from nowhere, you know.